Hey, what's up guys? Hope you're doing fine. In this video, we're going to talk about the upcoming Ryzen 3 3200G as well as the upcoming Ryzen 5 3400G a bit more in details. Now, in case you're not fully up to date what these processors are going to be like, I figured this would be the perfect time to talk about them a bit more. Now, I have been hyping over last gen the 3200G as well as the Ryzen 3400G quite a lot. I think both are fantastic processors or APUs for entry-level gaming there is so much power here for such a small price yesterday i tried fortnite on this new monitor i'm making a video on right now video is coming very soon guys anyway i'm happy to report that fortnite who we know is fairly cpu demanding ran extremely smooth in 1440p on the 2400g with the rtx 2060 and 8 gigs of ram and it should be added that i haven't done any overclocking on the CPU either, but yeah, the RTX 2060, yes, this graphics card is a bit overkill for this 4 core processor, but I'm quite stoked that this, like what, $140 CPU handles Fortnite so smoothly, and on the top left corner guys, you can see the current CPU load, anyway, let's talk about the 3200 and the 3400G, what? can we expect from AMD? Well, let's start with the architecture. Sadly, the upcoming APUs will not jump over to Zen 2 because they will be based on the current 2000 series, also referred to Zen Plus. And the reason for that is that the APU lineup is a few months behind the CPU lineup in terms of architecture. And yeah, that's something that is very important to have in mind, guys. So there is no 7 nanometer or Navi here, but still, there is lots of performance without a doubt. So in terms of IPC or instructions per cycle, we're looking at similar performance as current 12 nanometer Ryzen 2000 series, also known as Raven Ridge. The 3200G is configured with a 4 core, 4 thread CPU and 8 out of 11 NG CUs of the iGPUs are enabled here, yielding 512 steam processors. The maximum CPU clock speed have been dialed up by 300 megahertz over the 3200 and now attain 4 gigahertz boost frequency while the igpu engine frequency is increased by 150 megahertz to a total of 1250 megahertz the flagship the 3400g which i'm even more hyped about maxes out the silicon with a four core a thread CPU and we got all 9 NGCUs enabled for this iGPU. We got a total of 714 processors here and the CPU spools up to 4.2 GHz and the iGPU can go all the way up to 1400 MHz. Lastly, what about pricing then? Prices remain unchanged over the previous generation and so for the 3200G that one will be priced at $99 and the 3400G will be priced at $149. And lastly, the processors will go on sale this July, so very, very soon. Now, if you're letting me speak freely, I think these processors are going to be fantastic for entry-level gaming. And with the current 2400G that I'm gaming on right now, I'm able to run Fortnite and CSGO and pretty much any esports title with pretty damn good results, even without the RTX 2060 sitting inside the PC. Now, keep in mind though, although the onboard graphics is powerful, many times you have to dial back on the level of details to achieve a silky smooth FPS in games, but still, I mean, this is stellar price performance. So what is an APU? What is the reason for it? Cool thing about an APU like this, you can just buy the CPU because it has a graphics chip that is capable of running games on. So in case you're not having a budget for a graphics card just yet, you can simply buy this APU and game on it for a while. And then later on, if you want to, you know, extend or you want to upgrade your setup, you can just add the graphics card later on, just like I did without the CPU bottlenecking that bad really because the cpu is quite frankly actually enough now keep in mind though if you are thinking about maybe picking up the 3200 or the 3400 don't cheap out on ram since ryzen zen and zen 2 are heavily relying on ram speed because of infinity fabric i recommend you getting at least 3600 megahertz ram speeds or higher than that and you need to go dual channel as well so at least 16 gigabytes of ram 
RAM, 16 GB is a must because you have to split some of the RAM for video memory as well. Anyway, if there is anything in particular you want me to test specific games or whatnot, let me know in the comments below. I am going to test these processors out for you guys and hopefully giving you more insight whether these processors will be good for you or not. Now, let me know in the comments below, guys. Are you interested in these two CPUs? Let me know which one you're most interested in. I'm going to be back with a brand new video in just a few days time. Thank you so much for watching this video and until next time, have an awesome day, right? Bye.